So this is the beginning of our next unit and in this unit we're going to be looking at a topic known as functions which may be something that's familiar to some of you may have been mentioned in the past or you've heard the term this lesson focuses on what does it mean for something to be a function and we're also going to take a look at a couple of very important concepts related to function and that is domain and range there'll also be a couple of bits and pieces here and there but that's the overall function uh, function that's the overall focus of this lesson so first of all let's talk about relations now relations are something that you have been making use of um, through much of your high school career certainly uh, dealing with mathematics anytime you write something in terms of an equation for example here is the equation of a straight line y equals mx plus b this is a relation now as it turns out this is also a function a function is a special type of relation we're going to talk about what does it mean to be a function versus the more generic or more general relation as we go through this lesson you don't have to have an equation to be talking about a relation or a function another example that I have here is a list of ordered pairs now we don't often refer to it that way but what we really mean by ordered pairs is essentially the idea of a point on a graph so an x-coordinate and a y-coordinate would be an example of an ordered pair a more general way of speaking of this would be an independent variable with a dependent variable that would be an ordered pair so it regardless of whether we're looking at an equation whether we're looking at a set of ordered pairs or a set of points perhaps we have the graph of a function or of a relation doesn't matter how it's represented because this idea domain domain is the set of all possible values for the independent variable now the independent variable in an ordered pair is going to be the first variable and a set we actually have an example of a set right here in B a set is essentially just a list of the things that you're talking about so a set of ordered pairs is a list of ordered pairs there's the first ordered pair there's the second ordered pair and there's the third ordered pair domain would be the set of all possible values only for the independent variable which is only for the first value so a domain is actually going to be a list of numbers now this is something that's going to be more important as we move forward but just as a reminder a review when we talk about I mentioned a list of numbers well there are a whole bunch of different types of numbers if we go back to the beginning we have the natural numbers those are those are the counting numbers those are the first kind of numbers that were that were codified as people started to develop uh, mathematical systems there are different points in history where the value of zero was codified we didn't start there but then mathematicians and scientists and philosophers recognized the need for it whole numbers are the natural numbers combined together with zero and you can see that's what we're showing here these things when we bring them together form the whole numbers then we take basically all of the whole numbers and we say well what happens if those are negative and that forms together all possible integers which would be all positive whole numbers all negative whole numbers and that includes zero if you think of your list of negative numbers which would be everything negative three negative two negative one zero one two three and so on you can take any pair of those numbers for example negative four over seven negative four is an integer seven is an integer you could take 13 over 25 13 is an integer 25 is an integer then you end up with what are known as the rational numbers the rational numbers would also include things like the number negative 7 over 1 which of course is the same as just negative 7 if you can't represent the number this way as a some sort of fraction involving integers then you get into the irrational numbers and the irrational numbers would include numbers like pi and square root of 2 and any number of different 
uh, important quantities in mathematics and the important part about these is that all of these are what are known as non-repeating decimals. So if you have a number that can be represented as a repeating decimal that means that number can in fact be represented as a fraction. If you have a number that cannot be re uh, represented as a repeating decimal, meaning there is no pattern to the digits, that falls into the irrational numbers, and then we combine the rationals and the irrationals to form the reals. I have another graphic, a little bit more modern, and so I'm not going to go through this in the same detail, but I've, I've got this in here as a reference so that you can see it represented a different way. Okay, so as I mentioned in the, the earlier slide, domain is the set of all possible values for the independent variable. Then we have this other definition, which is range is for the dependent variable. So this first example says state the domain and range for this set of ordered pairs, this set of points. And so the way that we represent that, we use capital D for domain. And domain is going to be the list of all possible independent variables. So essentially all of the possible x values. Traditionally, I'm going to go ahead and just write them as is, but normally we want to write these in order. So 0, 2, 3. So just to make sure this is clear, this one is perfectly fine, but this one is better communication as well. Okay, so this one's communication, not so good. The range, capital R, is going to be the list of the Y values. So it's just a list of numbers, and I'm just going to go straight to putting them in order. If you have duplicates, you don't write them twice. You still only write them once. And we're going to talk about what does it mean when you have du duplicates as we, as we move forward here. All right, now in this one, it doesn't always have to be numbers or equations, as I mentioned before. In this case, we've got, uh, we want graphs. So first of all, it asks us to graph y equals x squared. So that's a parabola, has its vertex at 0, 0, Let's just put a scale on here. So there's 1, 2, 3, negative 1, negative 2, negative 3. So that's 3 and that's negative 3. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. And that should be far enough. If I put in a 1, I get a y value of 1 or a negative 1. You might recall this from your step pattern as well. Over 1, up 1 over 1, up 3 more, that's going to take us to 4, or if I put in 2, 2 squared is equal to 4, and if I put in negative 2, then negative 2 squared is equal to 4. That's as far as I can go with my scale, so I end up with something that looks like this. Just as you're sketching these things, just try to get through the points with a nice smooth curve. You can see there's a bit of a ripple there. I'm not going to worry too much about that. Um, so now let's go ahead and state the domain of this. Now this one we have to get a little bit more particular. We're not just listing numbers. So we use what's known as set notation again, but it's going to look a little different. In this case the domain, the way we write it is, we say that the variable x is a member of the real numbers. So that's what I'm saying right there. x is a member of the real numbers such that, and now what can I say about the, the x values? Is there any restriction on the x values? Well, this x value goes out and out and out and out, so that means all of the positive numbers are representative. And then if I go this way, this curve is going out to the left, which means all negative values. And another way of thinking of that is, ask yourself, is there any value of x that I'm not allowed to put in here? I can put in any number I want. I can put in zero, I can put in positive numbers and square them, I can put in negative numbers and square them. So it turns out that this is all I need for my domain. X is a member of the real numbers. What about the range on this one? 
Now, in this case, because it's in terms of the independent variable x and the dependent variable y, now we're going to talk about the y values. And because this is a line, it means it's continuous values. Whenever we're talking about continuous values, we talk about the real numbers. And now, are there any restrictions? Are there any areas where I can only go or that I'm not allowed to go? And if we take a look at it, of course, there are no y values down here. There's nothing down here. And so my y values such that, now I don't just close the set bracket, it's called a brace bracket. Now I actually have to say, well, what can I say about these values? These y values are all greater than or equal to zero. It's only I'm at zero or above zero for my y values. Now here's a relation that you might recall from your grade 10 course. x squared plus y squared equals 25. That's the equation of a circle. And all circles in this form, it's x squared plus y squared equals r squared. So what that tells us is that this is a circle centered at 0, 0 that has a radius of well, the radius squared is 25, and so that tells us that the radius is equal to 5. And you might wonder, well, hold on, r squared equals 25. Doesn't that mean that r equals plus or minus the square root of 25? And that would be a valid question, but a radius is an actual measurement of distance, so the radius has to be greater than 0, so we end up with r equals 5. So I'm just going to go ahead and mark that off. 2, 3, 4, 5. That's right to the edge. There's 5. And then 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. That's 5 at the top. Negative 5 down at the bottom. Negative 5 over here. And in this case, do I have shapes handy? I do not have shapes handy, so I'm just going to freehand this, unfortunately. Unfortunate just because it's hard to draw a good circle but we end up with something like that. Okay, so there is my graph of the circle, and that's not really the focus here. This is just a, a reasonable sketch. But what about the domain for this one? Once again, these lines are continuous, which means the x value is all real numbers. And now what can we say? Well, for each of these points, what's the farthest I go off to the right here? The farthest I go is to 5. What's the farthest I go off to the left here? The farthest I go is negative 5. So all of my x-coordinates are between negative 5 and positive 5. And that's exactly what I say. Negative 5 less than or equal to x. I say less than or equal to because it includes negative 5. Less than or equal to positive 5 because it includes positive 5. The range is going to be very similar in this case because of the symmetry of a circle. We end up with y member of r. You might be noticing this kind of double lined r. When we represent the various number sets, we usually have a stylized letter. Usually it's the first letter of their name, and then it's usually stylized with this double line. So the y values also go from negative 5, including negative 5, up to 5, and including 5 as well. Okay, so so far all we've really talked about is relations. Now, a function is a special kind of relation, and it says where each value of x yields only a single value of y. That's an easy thing to say, but this statement does not do it justice. So you need to see examples. So I've laid out some more specific ways to describe it, but these are still just descriptions. So for example, set notation, no x values repeated. Um, if we have a graph, there's a thing that we do on graphs known as the vertical line test. We're going to do an exercise where we look at that. And the most difficult one is the equation, and we'll do that last. So here's an exercise we're going to do. I've copied this to the next page, that's why I've given it a different color here, just to note that I've got it here. Determine which relations are functions. So the first one, I have a set 
of ordered pairs. You don't have to do this, but I'm going to recommend for us to start here, I'm going to start with domain. Now this is one of the things that you might want to start by practicing this way. So I start with my domain and I get 1, 3, 4, 7. And my range is equal to my range is 2, 1, 2, 2. So really the only things in the range are the numbers 1 and 2. Now I'm just going to go back to the previous slide just to point out this first one to you again. With set notation, no x value or no independent variable value is repeated. So notice here, 1, 3, 4, 7, there's no repetition in the x values. There is repetition in the y values, but that does not matter. So there is no repetition here. and therefore it is a function. Now x squared plus y squared equals 25. I'm going to show you a couple of ways to do this one. One of them, very quick sketch, we, we just did the sketch of this 5, 5, negative 5, negative 5. Draw that circle again and now I'm going to perform what's known as the vertical line test. The vertical line test says take a vertical line and then pass it through your relation that you're testing and this vertical line should only ever touch your graph at most one time. So out here it, does, it touches it zero times, that's fine. Out here it touches it zero times but when I get to here you can see it touches it two times. So this is known as the vertical line test. I'm just going to write VLT for now. This appears later in our note. So the vertical line test fails. And so that means this is not a function. Therefore, not a function. There is another way that I could test if this is a function. And that is this one in the equation form. We just did this one by we did a sketch and we looked at the vertical line test. Rearrange for y and ensure there's only a single value. So let's rearrange this equation for y. Well that means y squared by itself 25 minus x squared. I take this x squared and I move it over to the other side. So this equation became this equation. How do I get y? I don't want y squared. I want y all by itself. The way you take, uh, the way you turn y squared into y is by taking the square root. But whenever you take a square root and a variable is involved, you have to consider both the positive and negative answer. And this means that there are two values of y for each value of x. If I put a number in here for x, let's say I put 0 in here for x as an example. If I put 0 in here for x, then I get the positive square root of 25, which is 5. I get the negative square root of 25, which is negative 5. That's two answers. And that's not allowed. So in this case, it is also not a function. So for us in this course, in general, if we get a plus minus, then that means we know we don't have a function. So if we have y equals plus minus something, no function. Okay. Now, how about this one? Here's a relation. Now, we could, we could look at this in terms of, take a look at the domain, 1, 1, 4, 6 this one and this one is repeated. So this tells us right away that this is not a function. Another way we could do this is to graph it. We go to 1, 2, there's a point there. 1, 3, there's a point there. 4, that's 2, 3, 4, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, there's a point there. 
and let's see one two three four five six one so this relation is these points I'm going to take these away they look like other points but if we once again do that vertical line test and I move this around well here it's passing through one point it's passing through zero points that's okay one point is okay but when I get over to here it's passing through two points at the same time and so it fails the vertical line test it is not a function and we can do that with a whole bunch of other examples so going through this quickly this is a better exercise to do in person because people can stop and ask questions but here I'm just going to kind of scan the vertical line across and we only touch it once so this one is a function here scan across it's touching once 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 this one is a function so these first two yes and yes how about this one well this is another circle and as we discovered before and it's showing now this one is not a function over to here touching once the whole time that means this one is a function down here this one is a parabola but the parabola is on its side and you can see in that case we're touching twice so this one is not a function and this last one it's a shape that looks like the letter W it's actually the shape of a what's known as a quartic polynomial and you can see even though it's an odd shape it only touches it once at any point in time so this one is a function that out of the way and carrying on now this is just an idea and I put it in here it's the first note we're going to talk about this as we go forward through this unit and also through the course in general another way to think of a function is like a machine you've got the function itself which we quite often represent as f of x we're going to talk about that some more as well and then we we put something in here and then the function chews on it, operates on it, thinks about it, whatever you want to call it, and then it comes up with an answer, and that's its output. So I'm just giving you the idea of this right now, and we're going to explore that further as we go ahead. So that brings us into function notation. What does it mean? The probably the biggest problem that new students to functions run into with this is they are used to the idea of these brackets meaning multiplication when parentheses are introduced in mathematics the first meaning of those parentheses is multiplication these are not multi multiplication brackets these are function brackets what this is saying is that I have a function or a machine that depends on x so you're going to feed it some sort of x value and that's going to produce some sort of y value and then over here is the actual definition of the function this tells you when you feed it a value x here's what we need to do so you feed it a value x you multiply that value by 3 then you take that product and you add 2 to it this could be accomplished and it has been many times where you've written this exact same thing exact same thing y equals 3x plus 2 so at its most basic level it's really not different than what you've done before the result which is y depends on 3 times x plus 2 now we're just giving it a different code a different way of writing it and th these two occupy the same place so they actually mean the same thing when we graph a function we typically will graph the function value f of x on the y-axis and so if you were doing a graph there's x and there's y there's x and there's f of x they are certainly for where we are right now in the course and moving forward these are interchangeable it's just a terminology thing okay so the one that you are already familiar with is known as xy notation y equals 3x plus 2 this is the equation of a straight line 
I can sub any value for x in here that I want to. And so if I give the instruction to sub x equals 1, it means wherever x appears, put a 1 instead. And 3 times 1 is 3, plus 2 is 5. So this would actually be a point on a graph that would be at x equals 1, y equals 5. Function notation is exactly the same thing. My function is defined in terms of x. So whatever, I, whatever value of x I have, multiply it by 3 and then add 2 to the result. And it's got a slightly more concise way of writing it. So f of 1, so rather than having to say sub x equals 1, I can just say here f of 1. Well, that means wherever you had an x before, you're going to now replace that with a 1. That's all it is. It's a, for now, the function notation is a, an automatic substitution mechanic or instruction. That's what it's telling you to do. So if our function, for example, if f of x equals 3x plus 2, then what is f of 5? It's just like what we did there. f of 5 is going to be 3, but instead of x, I'm going to replace x with the number 5 plus 2. And of course, 3 times 5 is 15, plus 2 is 17. What is f of negative 1? 3, but instead of writing this as 3x, I'm going to replace my x or x's. You might have a, a, an equation or a definition that has multiple x's in it. Anywhere you see an x, you're going to replace it with this negative 1, plus 2. 3 times negative 1 is negative 3, plus 2 is negative 1. And finally, f of 2a. This is a little bit more interesting because I've got this a here. So f of 2a is 3, but instead of x, I'm going to write 2a plus 2. I can't do anything more with the a, but I can multiply 3 times 2. So that gives me 6a plus 2. So I end up with a new relation, but it's not in terms of a, or sorry, it's not in terms of x anymore, it's in terms of a. So you're going to need to practice this until you get very comfortable with it. Once you're comfortable with it, it becomes automatic and it's, it's quite straightforward. Okay, and that's it. A lot of these questions are also quite straightforward, quite short, but some of them are a little bit more involved. Uh, so good luck with that.